In this video, I'm going to be looking at the differences between a regular tyre and a tyre designed specifically for electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are sold as a direct replacement for an internal combustion engine powered vehicle with the added benefit of lower running costs and hopefully a lower environmental footprint. While they are similar in many ways, in some key ways they are quite different which presents some interesting engineering challenges especially for the tyres. They're generally a lot heavier than a regular powered vehicle thanks to the weight of the batteries. They have a lot more torque from zero RPM which produces more strain for the tyres they're quieter, there's no drivetrain noise, which means you hear more of what's going on in the cabin. And perhaps most importantly, the overall energy efficiency of the package is critical thanks to a battery taking far longer to recharge than it currently takes to refill a fuel tank. These unique requirements means a tire will have a bigger overall impact on the EV experience compared to a traditional vehicle. You're gonna hear more of what the tire is doing. You're gonna feel more of what the tire is capable of. And again, most importantly, any extra energy use the tire generates is gonna mean reduced range and more time recharging, something an electric vehicle owner strives to avoid. But what do these EV tires bring in the real world? Well, to find out, I've very kindly been lent this beautiful Audi e-tron. I've got a set of the normal Hankook Ventus S1 Evo 3 SUV tires. These are the aftermarket replacement tires. I've got a set of the Ventus S1 Evo 3 EV, which are the tires designed specifically for an electric vehicle. And I'm gonna be using this vehicle on both sets of wheels and tires to find out exactly what the EV tire brings in terms of handling, noise, and range. So you join me after I've spent nearly a week with this e-tron and i've done as many miles as possible now the british weather hasn't been brilliant it's been raining quite a lot this week which hampered some of my testing but i think i've got all the key data i really wanted to get to present to you exactly how the tires are different firstly handling the tires now hankook were very kind enough to send me both the mounted tires on the 20 inch wheels and some unmounted so i could handle them and shoot with them now the differences visually are very slight. The EV tyre has that very lovely EV emblem and also tread pattern wise, again, very, very close. But the EV tyre, if you look at it, it just has slightly less lateral grooves. And that's for two reasons. Firstly, less lateral grooves means less tread pattern noise because it's moving less air. And secondly, because EVs are traditionally heavier, they don't need as many lateral grooves to disperse water because of the weight of the car does some of that for you. Handling the tires is where you start to notice the real differences. The EV tire is heavier, significantly heavier actually. Two reasons for this. Firstly, it's got a stiffer, meatier construction, again, to cope with the extra weight of the EV and the batteries. And secondly, most visually different, you'll see on the inside it has acoustic foam and that is essentially literally just foam bonded to the inside of the tire to reduce the cavity noise of the tire. And while it seems like a simple solution, it actually makes quite a significant difference as we're going to get to. One final thing worth noting, as this is the 22 inch wheel option and they are big and heavy, the focus from the OE, the focus from Audi or any OE with the big wheel option is less about efficiency and noise and more about handling and comfort. So that's something worth bearing in mind as we're going through this video. So all these differences, what do you actually notice on the road, if anything? Well, firstly, I'm gonna start with handling. Now, this is the number one reason I would buy the EV tire, but I think for most people, it's probably the smallest reason they'd buy the EV tire. And that is the handling of the tire is improved noticeably, but honestly, I'm just not sure if the average sort of SUV or EV driver will care that much unless they're thinking about sportiness. The tire reacts better. The most noticeable thing is the steering precision. As you turn with the non-EV tire, you get this sense of the car starting to load the tire sidewall and the tire almost sitting on the sidewall. So there's a delay to the steering. The EV steer tire, the EV tire, which this is wearing at the moment, is more direct, it's more linear, it's more predictable. The rear feels more unified with the front. All things I love in terms of handling. You don't forget it's a 2.7 ton vehicle, but on this EV tire, on the EV specific tire, it's, it's, it's so much better. Secondly, traction. Now, both tires did exactly the same 0-60 time. That's not so much a product of the tire, it's more a product of this is 2.7 tons and it only has around 400 horsepower. So we can't brake traction in normal conditions and dry conditions. However, braking, not the most scientific data I've ever given to you because it wasn't a test facility, it was on the road. Now, the non-EV tire, is still a very good braking tire. It came fourth in my test and was in the front group in uh, my SUV test this year. The EV tire stopped the car at 8% shorter distance than the non-EV tire, which is a huge step forward. 
Now, again, this wasn't the most scientific data, but this is the data I got from my testing. Hankook have very kindly done this at a test facility for me, and it was 5% better in the dry and 4% better in the wet. So that is a significant step forward in braking performance. That's not something that you notice every day in driving, but when you lean on it, the extra weight of the batteries and everything are pushing the car along that's something you'll really appreciate in an emergency situation so another big tick of why an ev tire is better for an ev as for the noise and comfort of the two sets of tires now quickly touching on comfort as i'm going over speed bumps very very similar between the two tires in fact i would say the non-ev tire has a slight edge in extreme conditions so like potholes or big road imperfections but overall in day-to-day -day driving very very similar the noise levels of the tire this is where the foam matting and the tread pattern the slight tread pattern tweaks make a noticeable uh, difference in a normal vehicle the drivetrain the internal combustion engine accounts for 50 percent five zero percent of the overall noise you hear and in an ev it's 15 percent. that means there's much greater scope for everything not like ancillaries tires noise from the wing mirrors all these things have a bigger impact which is why this car has these fancy digital wing mirrors because you get much less wind noise from the wing mirrors it's it's very noticeable as is the tires it's a slightly lower pitch but it's just a better all-round package it's really noticeable especially when you're coasting down or anywhere between about 20 and about 50 60 miles an hour before the wind noise completely takes over it's just a relaxing, quiet place to be. I mean, listen to how quiet this is. And this is a really rough road. You might not be able to hear it, but this is one of those roads that the UK government love to put down and then put down a load of stones and then you just drive it into the floor. So impressive. The official data from Hankook, a test facility again, without any external influences on an ISO registered surface, was anywhere between half and two and a half decibels on a 40 to 20 coast down significantly difference when you remember that the decibel scales is logarithmic it's not linear so i think that's another tick where the extra work and the extra engineering that goes into an ev tire for noise uh, really does make a difference and finally range now range as i said in the intro i think is one of the biggest things for any ev owner the range your vehicle will go on a single charge which is heavily affected by the energy consumption of the tire. Now, again, like the braking, doing range testing on the open roads isn't the easiest thing in the world, and it's not exact data. I did go out very late at night and did uh, found a very quiet stretch of the A1 and just did a 56 mile, 56.4 mile leap I did on both tires. And while it was one of the days was sport by rain one of the days was sport by the car not fully charging overnight so it ended up being a bit rushed and i had to go out later than i planned because of rain so there are these little variances in the test data i'm going to give you that hankook didn't have in their own data which i'll also give you but on my 56.4 mile loop i found a difference of about nine percent in rain which is significant when you calculate that up to the overall battery usage on a charge that could be up to 25 or 30 miles extra range. I get enough battery anxiety from my phone, let alone my EV. So I think an extra 30 miles, if you're driving an internally combustion powered car that's getting 30 miles a gallon, your petrol tank, your gas tank is probably only 10 or 11 gallons from empty or nearly empty to full. So you're effectively getting a free gallon of fuel by fitting a more energy efficient tire for an EV. Now this wouldn't work for an internal combustion power car. I'll explain why in a minute. But to me, that is a significant, you might think, oh, it's only 25 or 30 miles. But when you put it in the context of petrol, that's a significant advantage. So to conclude, should you be fitting an EV tire to an electric vehicle? Yes, you should. Not just for one reason, not just for the energy efficiency of the tire, not just for the lower noise levels, not just for the extra handling, the crisper, sharper handling, the more harmonious behavior of the vehicle, the shorter, safer braking distances. It's everything that goes involved. Tires are very complicated pieces of engineering. Electric vehicles are very unique challenges and companies like Hankook that are making specific EV tires are putting a lot of engineering expertise into those tires which makes them a very good, a very smart purchase choice. The only thing I haven't been able to test is wear, and Hankook tell me that the wear between the two tires will be very similar, and the Audi, 
on the OE program require at least 30,000 miles from the front axle and 35,000 miles from the rear axle, which is significant mileage for a vehicle like this that's 2.7 tonnes. So it's not like you're going to buy a tyre with all these advantages and then it's going to wear out in 1,000 miles. There's, it, it's not. It's going to be exactly the same as the traditional internal combustion regular tyre, whatever you want to call it. Does this work in reverse? Can you put an EV tyre on a normal powered vehicle and get all of these benefits? No. You might get lower noise because of the foam matting, although you can, in certain applications, get acoustic foam in regular tyres or tyres not designed for EV vehicles. But things like energy use of the tyre, that's going to behave differently on an internal combustion vehicle. Because it's lighter, it doesn't need the extra structure to resist the deformation which turns energy into heat. So all you're doing is carrying around extra weight, which could mean you're using more energy. What about handling? Well, the extra construction might give you slightly sharper handling, but that will come at the expense of things like wet performance and uh, hydroplaning performance because you don't have the extra weight, so you need the extra lateral grooves. That's why they're in the original tires. So don't try and put an EV tire on a non-EV car. Stick with the regular tires for traditionally powered vehicles and EV tires for EV vehicles. That's the take home. One final thought, what do I think about the whole EV experience? If you've watched this channel for any significant amount of time, you'll know I'm a petrol head through and through. So it almost pains me to say this, but this Audi e-tron is incredible. And if I had the need for a family car and I had a lot of money, because at this spec it's nearly a hundred thousand pound, there's just no reason to do internal combustion. The only thing holding it back is the recharge time. Everything else, about the electric motor, the electric drivetrain, the electric experience is better, apart from sort of noise and emotion. And for a family, for a family car, I, I just don't think that really matters. So Audi, you've made an amazing vehicle. Hankook, uh, thank you very much for the support uh, and Audi, but thank you especially to Hankook for sending me uh, two sets of 22 inch wheels mounted and then some unmounted tires to film with. Really appreciated. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the test if you've got any questions about evs any thoughts ask below thumbs up if you enjoyed it of course uh, i will be doing more and more on evs in the future especially ev specific tires as we go into the future the new world uh, i'm not personally convinced that batteries are the forever answer but for right now they seem to be the correct stopgap to help uh, reduce carbon emissions uh, and it's great uh, companies like Audi are producing such fantastic vehicles for these and the time manufacturers are reacting with their own uh, ways of helping. I think that's it. Any questions, please ask below and as always, safe motoring.